All right, so now let's get working on our first test case for MP1. There's a couple of things that we're going to do to get started. Okay, so the first thing is I've set up my grader properly to run the grading steps for MP1, but I really don't want to use the grader when I'm developing. What I want to use is I want to run the test suites, and I don't have a way to do that yet, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if I open up here and I say edit configurations, and I'm going to open up this Gradle uh, spinner, I've already got a test that you can use as a starting point. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy that. Okay, and then you're going to rename this to test MP1. And down here, you're going to change this from MP0 test to MP1 test. Everything else is completely the same. So I'm going to hit, and, and now what you'll probably want to do is you'll probably want to say store as project file. This will add a new file to your repository so that if you clone this on some other machine, you'll have this run configuration. This is a pretty good thing to do. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to hit OK. All right, cool. Now, I have this test MP1. Let's run it and see what happens. Now, I don't expect this to work because I haven't done any work on the MP, but this is your workflow when you work on one of our MP checkpoints. Do not run the grader. It hides a lot of useful information. If you come to the help site and you say, oh, I ran the grader and this happened, usually the first thing we're going to ask you to do is to just run the test suites because the test suites will provide more output and they provide more useful information. And they're really the thing that you want to use as part of your development workflow. You don't want to you know, be running the grader to see what happened. You want to run the test suites to see what happened. The other thing we can do that I'll show you how to do in a minute is we can zero in and just run one test suite at a time, which is even more helpful, right? Because when we, because you'll see like this is taking a while and some of the tests are a little bit slow. And so rather than having to run all five tests or all four tests every time, I, I want to see what happened. Usually I'm going to work on one test at a time, right? So I'm going to basically, you know, uh, zero in on that test, you know, uh, work on that test and get it until I get it to, to succeed and then move on to the next test, right? And again, you can see that these are kind of slow. I've got some other things running on my machine and, and nothing worked, right? Which of course is what I expect because I'm just getting started. All right. So now there's a couple of ways to do this. The, if you go over here uh, into the testing code, and I do encourage you, you do really need to read the test for each checkpoint. On the lessons, we're gonna work from the top down. We're gonna start with the first test and then we'll just go test by test by test. So there will be a lesson covering every single test case um, and giving you some sense of how to approach it. We might also come cover some other content on the lesson, that's fair game. Um, but we are going to try to guide you into the right spot to, to, to get to work. Um, all right, so I'm going to focus on the first unit test, which is called Test Restaurant Compare by Name. I'm going to run this, and if I want to run this all by itself, what I do is I can click over here on this green arrow and click Run Unit Test Restaurant, um, and you'll see this creates a new run configuration for just that test. Um, and this is super helpful because just running this test is actually going to be a lot faster than running the entire suite. Now, let's look at this test and we'll see a little bit about what it's doing. So what this test is doing is it's seeing if your uh, comparator works properly. So what is a comparator? A comparator is very similar to compare to, except that instead of comparing one object with another, a comparator takes two arguments. So let's say go to uh, declaration or usages. That's defined over here in my restaurant.java file. So with comparable, what we do is we establish a canonical ordering. It's attached to the actual class, right? I implement comparable and I provide the compare to method and returns an int. However, there's some cases where, like with a restaurant, I might have multiple ways of sorting restaurants. I might want to sort them by name. I want, might want to sort them by distance from my house. I might want to sort them by cuisine. I might want to sort them by rating, right? So there's not really one canonical way to sort a list of restaurants or an array of restaurants. Instead, what Java allows us to do is establish something called a comparator. So a comparator represents one way of sorting a group of restaurants. Not the only way, not a canonical way, but one way. And so the idea is that it's not defined, it can be defined anywhere. In this case, I defined it as a static field on the class, but it can really be defined anywhere in another file, in another library, right? Um, it doesn't, it's not a, a method, it's not an instance method, 
right? When I implement comparable, I have to define an instance method compare to. Here, I'm essentially defining a static method called sort by name. Now, this is interesting syntax. Remember when we talked about Lambda expressions, this is a Lambda expression. It takes two restaurants as inputs and it's supposed to tell me what to do with them, right? And the return value is identical to what I use with comparable. It's negative one, zero, or one, depending on you know, which order they're supposed to go. Now, right now it's always returning zero. And that's the reason why this test is failing. Um, and so, you know, we're going to work on that. Now, what is it supposed to do? It's supposed to sort them by name, okay? And so what I need to do, let me open up a block in here, is I need to use the name. These are two restaurant objects. So for example, if I, I can do, uh, you know, restaurant1.name, uh, uh, sorry, get name, right? Uh, and I can also do name because I've defined this as a static method on the class. So I have access to a private field, but I can use get name, I can use either. And I need to do something to compare that to restaurant two dot name, right? Um, and this is an auto completing, I think, because the syntax is wrong. Uh, but I need to do something with these two values, right? To compare them together to return a result so that the test suite passes, right? Now inside a Lambda, I can use return zero. Um, it's going to say it's going to yeah, replace this. It's going to basically guide me back to my starting point, right? Um, but remember with a Lambda expression, you can open up a block and you can use return inside that block, right? Essentially, this is a shortcut for writing a function um, or a method. Um, but if you have something that's just a single statement like return zero, Android Studio will basically encourage you to just convert that into a Lambda that just yields that immediately, right? Okay, so this is your first little challenge here, right? Um, this is a single line of code, right? I'm not saying it's easy. It's thinking that's involved, but this is not like a big algorithmic challenge here, right? Uh, part of it is just figuring out like, what is this comparator thing and how does it work and, and, and working through some of that. Comparator is like a built-in thing in Java. So you can Google it, you can see examples, uh, go for it. But your first task is to fix this so that it sorts the list of restaurants by name. Once you do that, two things will happen that hopefully you will find exciting. One is that you will pass the test case. The other is that when you load up the app, the list of restaurants will now be sorted by name in the view. Why? Because the list library code that we're using uses this comparator to sort the list of items. And so rather than just being in the order that they were in in the CSV, they'll now be sorted in whichever way you decide. So you can use that as part of your debugging if it helps, right? Um, but really, I mean, there's only one way to get this wrong where they end up backwards and then you just kind of flip things around. So so anyway, good luck with this. This is your first, uh, you know, your first real programming challenge on the MP. Uh, it's not intended to be, you know, uh, terribly difficult, but a lot of the challenge here, as we will see going forward, is usually just kind of figuring out what to do finding the right place in the code, figuring out how to run the test suites and things like that, right? So good luck. Um, and if you need help, you know where to find us.